Hey, Railheads. It seems like a lot of folks are doing wire trees these days. Well, here's my take on it. Coming up on my Finger Lakes Railway Lab. You'll need to get you some floral wire from Hobby Lobby or someplace. I had some 26 gauge on hand and I can't even remember why now. Um, oh, and you'll need a pair of wire cutters. Mine are wore out from cutting the trip pins off of couplers. But I got me a new pair the other day at Lowe's. I tried a couple different ways to form the basic tree structure. The first way is quicker, but I think I like the second way better. Uh, the quick way is to wrap three feet of wire around your fingers five or six times. Now, for me, this made a very small tree, but you may want some of those. Then you just cut the top of the loop and then twist the bottom of the loop. And that makes a, a trunk and a little handle that you can use to stick into the layout. The second way I tried, I cut eight or ten pieces of wire about 14 inches long. And I got them all in my hand and then bend them right in half. And then twist the bottom like before. And you can experiment with the number of wires and the length. Well, them little wires are sharp when they poke you. Twist groups of three or four wires together for branches. And then leave one out and twist two together for branches of different lengths. Well, they're starting to look like trees now. Of course, you can cut any wires that are too long or even twist them into a loop if you want to. Um, no rules, anything goes. Now, the hardest thing for me is trying to cover up the twisted wire. Now, I tried three or four methods and I think the last one is going to be my go-to. So I started out with this golden fiber paste. I had it on hand. Uh, Boomer recommends it. And this whole project is based largely on his work. As you may know, I don't have an arts background, no experience sculpting. And I guess I don't have the patience for this technique. So one method may work fine for Boomer, but not for me. You just got to experiment and find what works for you. Well, I tried to sand the trunk and add some texture uh, with not much luck. This stuff is hard as a rock when it dries. Ask me why I switched to thinned white glue here, but I did. And I'm going to brush it on the twisted parts of the tree and sprinkle tile grout onto it. I got a bunch of it. I use it for dirt roads and stuff. And I thought it might work here. And not so much. Well, then I wanted to try making a thick paste by adding water to the grout and brushing that on the trees. Now, it seemed okay at first, but they turned out kind of crumbly after they dried. And I'll show you that here in a few minutes. Well, I kind of got out of sequence here. I should have put the static grass on before I painted with the camo earth brown. But no big deal. I'll just shoot them again later. Well, I'm out of sequence again, but this looks pretty cool. Maybe a little too light. Going over the spray paint with these brown washes and just messing around trying stuff having fun and now here's the last method I tried to, to cover up those twisted wires and this is one of boomers ideas too badger sells this aluminum oxide for their hobby sandblasting rig I got it from mega hobby online for around 13 bucks including shipping probably a lifetime supply for me and you can get 50 pound bags at stores, but I didn't want to mess with all that. This coat didn't give me quite the coverage I wanted, so I let it dry and then gave it another coat of matte medium and shook more aluminum oxide on until it looked good. The only thing I don't like about this method, I think the trunk looks too small. I'm sure there's a way to improve on that 
Hey, share your ideas in the comments. I'd appreciate it. And now we'll glue on some 12 millimeter static grass. Uh, first, let me talk just a minute about this matte medium. I'm using it full strength for this whole project, but you still just use a tiny bit. My first bottle is almost empty, and I've had it for several years. And I found a good deal on Amazon. I've got the link in the description. It's like seven bucks for an eight ounce bottle of Liquitex Professional. This happens to be the 12 mil I had. Uh, the brand or color, it doesn't matter at all because we'll paint it later. I'm brushing the matte medium only on the branches. I'm keeping it off of the trunk. Well, I'm not being real careful here. I'm just sticking some grass on the branches. And I'll let it dry and then come back with a second application. Of course, I'm saving all the grass that falls on the newspaper. Oh, remember I mentioned that crumbly grout earlier? Here's a different tree where the grout stuck on good. Okay, back to the static grass. Well, the first application is dried, and I'm just trying to get rid of any loose stuff. But man, that matte medium really does a good job here. So for round two, I'm brushing the matte medium onto the first coat of static grass and trying to catch all the little ends that are sticking out. And then same as before, just sticking more static grass on the branches. Okay, now it's time to paint. I rattle can mine with Rusto Camo Earth Brown. Uh, you could certainly use the airbrush and different colors, you know, whatever you think looks good. And here they are, all painted. Well, they look pretty weird until you get the flock on them. But the spray paint really covers up a lot of the ugliness on the trunks. And now you could put some washes on the trunks, maybe try dry brushing a real light gray. I'd probably wait till I got them planted on the layout and see how they looked, and then pull them up and work on the trunks as needed. Well, finally, the last step in the process, flocking. I'm using full strength matte medium again. I've tried hairspray and 3M77 in the past. The things start to shed after a while. Well, I haven't even tried to shape these trees yet. You'll need to bend these branches around to get them out of the way and then do the final shaping later. You can use your favorite flock here, uh, ground foam, knock leaves, whatever. I had some of the super leaf from Scenic Express, so I used that, mostly medium green. And then while the glue was still wet, I sprinkled just a pinch of these two other colors, sandstone and rawhide, and just to break up the solid green a little bit. Let me zoom in on a couple I've already planted. They're surrounded on both sides by super trees. They blend in pretty well, and I like these better. Well, I hope I've showed again what you can achieve with no artistic talent. And sure, they take some time, but there's nothing difficult or stressful about it. And I hope I've inspired y'all to give it a try. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care.